God has put a, a word in my heart. Last time I was talking about God's faithfulness. And I want to continue on that. We all desire to have good friends, right? All of us want to have good friends or good people around us. One of the things that we look in them or need to have in them is trustworthiness or faithfulness. We would love to have friends in our lives that we can trust them. See, sometimes your friends could be your parents, sibling, or a friend from the school, college, or from the company. That's fine. But when you start talking, when you start sharing your life with them, when you understand that, you know, they're not trustworthy and what I talk to them is going around and you, are, you start getting it from others, you know, you feel hurt. And you say, you know what? I don't want to do anything with such people. People are like this. So one of the things that we always crave in our heart is a faithful person in our life so that we can go talk and it's not only for the good times that we go and share, we have that bonding. But when we mess up, when we do bad, when things go wrong, how this trustworthy person will come and stand next to him. You know what? No one else like our Father Lord. No one else will be like that. Definitely you will have people. I have people in my life like that. And you can trust them with my life. I can talk to them anything. They'll stand with me. But... And I, and I know, and we need to know, there is nobody like God in our life that. So we want to continue that. You know, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says, The God who began a good work in you will finish it. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that he began a good work in you? I believe that. You know, he started an amazing work in my life, and he is going to finish it. And he is committed to finish that work in our lives. Hallelujah. Let's look at John chapter 21. Verse 3. John, Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 3. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. It is not a leisure time that Peter said, you know what, I'm going fishing. Why did he say, who was with them at that time? Peter told whom to go and fish. Bible says, the previous verse says, there were other six people with Peter. James, John, the others, the Thomas was there, another total of seven were there when Peter told them, or six of them were there, when Peter told them, I am going fishing. You know what they, what they told? We are going with you also. If you are going, we are going to come with you. If you are going to fish, we are going to come with you. Why Peter said this? What was the situation at that time when they decided to go fishing? This is the time Jesus died and he was crucified and resurrected. And by the time, Jesus appeared twice to his disciples. Twice. Even after appearing, two times in their life, these people are waiting for something. These people are not happy. It is not only that Jesus told, or Jesus appeared to them, and he also told him, as the Father sent me, I send you. So at that time, they saw what Jesus was teaching while he was on earth. They saw the fulfillment of what Jesus said. They saw the resurrected Jesus in person, in the spirit. And he also told them again that you need to go. I am sending you as Father sent me. So the message was clear. Everything what Jesus told was clear to this people. But still... Peter said, you know what? I'm going to go fishing. It was not at that time he was hungry because he went fishing. This is the only one thing he knew as a trade. And the others also the same. That's why they said, you know what? If you are going, we are coming with you. Because we also don't know anything. I was thinking, 
I was meditating on the scripture. I was thinking, what is the reason? Even after understanding or seeing Jesus and hearing again from him that what you need to do, you need to go, they decided to go fishing. You know, if it was for the food at that time, he knew how to go and cast a, uh, you know, cast a hook and get a fish because Jesus told him to do that and he did it in the past. But they all went. We will come to the details when, as, I'm, as I'm taking you further. But at this time, they understood or they did not understand something. They decided, you know what? If we want to live, if we want to go further, we need to go back to the same trade. We need to go and fish and I don't think anything else other than this. Otherwise, we need to or we will not survive. You know, when we actually look at it, the conclusion or why Peter and these people concluded to go fishing, I was thinking this. You know, when you read and meditate this, you will also understand this. The physical presence of Jesus was lacking in their life. Three and a half years, these people saw Jesus, walked with them, saw the miracles, experienced the miracles. They were living with Jesus. But now, just imagine this. The master they was, all, they was always seen with them is no more. But Jesus already warned them. Jesus already told them, you know what? You're not going to see me for some time. Then I'm going to give a comforter with you. He prepared them. You know the prayer in John chapter 17, the encouragement, the empowering words of Jesus was all a preparation for this season in their life. Though they were prepared before crucifixion, but they went, when they met with the reality, they could not really take it. You know, when they were with Jesus, he was the go-to person. They were so dependent on Jesus. If there was anything, they used to go to him. Jesus, we don't have food. You are alive, we're perishing. Life is perishing. What are you going to do? Teach us to pray. Every need was requested to Jesus. And he was present in their life to rebuke them, to teach them, to provide for them. Everything was there. So they could not cope up with the absence of Jesus in the physical. So, but he resurrected. He showed them, but the Holy Spirit was not yet come. But he also told them what you need to do. But imagine seeing Jesus, but actually before the day of Pentecost, and they are going through this time. Then Peter thought, how are we going to survive? You know, when they were with Jesus, food was not a problem. People were providing for them, right? They, they used to go to the wedding. They used to be fed well. They used to go to the feast. It was taken care. They did not worry about their food, the lodging, nothing. That was not a problem for them. But now, what was there in the physical... But now it is not seen. God is training them for something above. God is training them for something better for their life. But they did not really understand that. That's why he said, if we need to survive, we need to go back to the trade. You know, the same Peter, he also experienced and also did miracle. When Jesus sent them as two by two, do you go? They cast out the demons, they healed the sick, right? And they also saw the food multiplied, but they did not even try praying for that. But in that situation, he's saying, let's go fishing. You know, let's look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. You know, this Peter is a very interesting character. We can really relate to him. Then he said to them, Jesus talking to Peter and Andrew, his brother, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He said to them, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. This is a call that Jesus giving to these brothers. You know what they did? They left everything and started following Jesus. You know, the, the word that says, I will make you fishers of men. You know, Jesus is telling them, you know what? I am going to begin a process in your life. 
In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, The one who began a good work. This is the beginning of something new in Peter and Andrew's life. Peter and Andrew are saying yes to this new chapter in their life. You know, when Jesus calls you and I, we are saying yes to that process. You know, when he said, I will make you from a mere fisherman to a fishers of man. When Jesus says this, what we need to understand is, It is a transition from your present state to a God-planned future. This is your transition. You are saying yes to Jesus. You are saying yes to the plan of God. And you are saying, Lord, I am ready to change. I am ready to travel with you from my present state, from my present situation. And I am ready to come where you want me to come. That's why he said, What we need to do for that? Follow. They said, yes, I'm going to follow. But what happened to the same Peter who said yes to that process? And the process was being taken. uh, This process was happening in his life for the three and a half years. And now when he, in John chapter 21, but he is saying, I am going back from the same process. Even for a while. You know, we know what just happened at the time of crucifixion. He denied Jesus. He is the one who said, I am ready even to go and die for Jesus. I will not let you die. You know, out of anger and passion, he took the sword out and cut off the ear of the soldiers. You know, that's how passionate, that's how emotional he was. You know, that person is the same one who said, I don't know him. That was his fear. The same person now is sitting And saying, I'm going fishing. And he got that influence among other people. You know, these John and James, Peter, John and James had the, had the uh, fortunate, uh, fortunate opportunity to be with Jesus in some wonderful uh, situations in their life. Mount of Transfiguration. No one else. They were there at the valley, but they were there up there. And so Moses and Elijah Those people are sitting now thinking, oh, you began the process, but what is going to happen now? When God calls you for a plan and purpose, when God calls you out, he is saying, I am going to stay faithful to the call. I am going to stay faithful for the process. And now, when you say yes to follow me, what you are saying is, I am also committing myself to that process. Many a times we have a misunderstanding that when we think of a call, follow me, this is only about ministry. How many of you think that way? You know, when when we read the Bible, we always, definitely we need to spiritualize everything. Whatever is written in the Bible is spiritual. But when we talk about the call of God, following Jesus, committing yourself to Jesus, we only think about ministry or pastoring, evangelism or prophesying. You know, everything is ministry. Definitely, yes, here Jesus called him to be the leader, to be the evangelist, the apostle. That is there. But it is not only for you and I. How can we relate to that? You know, the beginning The transition from the present state to what God planned for you. That's where you are saying yes. For that you are saying yes to. How many of you heard of a name called Daniel Kolenda? He is is heading a ministry called Christ for All Nations. That is also CFAN. How many of you know the name or heard the name Brainard Bonke? He is a successor. So Daniel Kolenda is currently heading this one of the biggest organizations. They are at the forefront of winning souls or evangelical crusades in Africa. And they are a very big ministry. Recently, I heard a wonderful five minutes testimony of him. How he was picked. And this man was a part of the ministry, but not in a church ministry, not in a pastoral ministry. He was working. He was a staff in one of the warehouses. In this ministry. And one day, David Bonke saw him and he said, Young man, you want to travel with me? You want to be my 
traveling partner. We want to be in that traveling team. He said yes to it. He was working in a warehouse, definitely a part of the ministry. And from there, his journey started. He said, I started traveling with him. He started seeing things happen. Then after some time, he said, why don't you preach for 10 minutes? Then he started giving him that 10 minutes. Then he said, okay, I'm going to lead this four days. And the fifth day, you preach. And he started doing that. Then he started stepping back and he said, why don't you do the entire meeting from start to end? And he was progressing. He was transitioning from where he was and into what God was calling him. He said yes to it. There were people in his life for that process. But eventually he became that where God wanted him to be. And now he is heading that ministry. Yeah, definitely he's just talking about evangelism and the ministry. But what about other people? Is it the only thing that we will do in the kingdom of God? No. I want you to understand the depth of that word, I will make you. When Jesus says, I will make you, this involves when you come to the church, what you hear in the church, the prayer happening in the church is all a part of that making from where you are to where God wants you to go. He is faithful and he is committed to that call, to that plan over your life. And I also saw a man, I also know a man in the Lord. And the call is not only, I said, it is for the ministry part, where you are and where you are going to go. Maybe you're a bachelor now, God wants you to be a godly husband and a wife. That is a journey. And if you're a husband and a wife, from there, you're going to be a dad and mom or a grandparent or a grandmother. That is again a journey. An employee to an employer, that is a journey. God is committed. God is faithful to make that process complete. God is faithful to make that process fulfilled in your life. I did not leave Peter. He is still there. He's about to go and fish. But what is happening in Matthew chapter 4, 19, when God called him and three and a half years, it was happening. You and I are also in this process. We are going through this. Emotions are there. Challenges are there. But still in those challenges, in these emotions, God is making you. God is making you. Hallelujah. And I talked about that man of God, Daniel Kolenda. I also know a person who started off as an accountant. Then he became an accounts manager. And I saw this in the last few years. He became as one of the partners of a company. He's one of the directors of a company. Is he a part of the ministry? Is he doing a pulpit ministry? No. Is he in any of the prayer team or any of the ushering team? No, he's not there. But he's there very much involved in missions. He's the one who gives into the mission. He's the one who gives to the kingdom of God. They're not there in the front. They're not preaching from the pulpit. But are they in the ministry? Yes, they are. From an employee to uh, became an employer. And it is not a small growth. It is a big growth. Hallelujah. This is how God works in your life. The one story I heard and one story I know personally. And when God is committed to that story, God is committed to that process, and God is now looking at Peter and his companions. Peter is saying, I want to go back to that. You know, many a times, the physical absence of God or the physical absence of need being met can put people into a situation of doubt. No clarity. Fear. Fear of unknown. A lack of confidence. And also, in Peter's case, I believe that I am not good enough mentality. Because I messed up. Yes, I repented, but I don't think God can use, you, use me anymore. I don't think I can be used by God anymore because I messed up big time. And I am stuck here. You know, many people get stuck here. The process, they were there in the past. God called him out and he left everything. Now he has not reached the fulfillment, 
But when we read the Bible, we see Peter in the middle. Peter in the middle. And Peter is thinking, I am fearful. I don't know where the provision is going to come. I know God definitely will do this thing. But he was not used to the way of the leading of the Spirit. Hallelujah. That was going to come into his life. But when you and I, we experience the presence of God on a daily basis. We enjoy the goodness of God. We see miracles left, right, and center. Every prayer that we pray getting answered. When we pray for others, miracles are happening. We see prayers that we are like, wow, having an exciting Christian life. But what if things are not happening? What if those miracles which happened in the past are happening, not happening anymore in your life? There is a kind of a pause. But you know God is there. As Peter said, yes, I know he resurrected. I know he spoke to me. But you don't have that active presence of God in your life. This is where many stop the process. Not from God's side, from our side. Many a times we think if there is any mess up happening, you know what? God, I'm not good enough. You cannot use me because I'm not a good person. And I'm fearful about my future. I don't know what is going to happen in my life. So I am not going to be there. I am not the right fit for that. You can look for someone else. You know, that is slowly, it's a slippery slope. They take a deviation without even knowing it. But they go somewhere else. They don't even know after some time where, where I am. Excuse me. But what we need to do is continuously being in the presence of God, hearing the word of God is how we stay connected. That's a way we understand how we are going to go further. You know, I love what the other portion of it what is the role of Jesus here? You know, we heard last week, Genesis chapter 28, last last week. Genesis chapter 28, verse 15 says, I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Here we saw Jesus said, I will make you. That is the word. That is a promise. I will make you. He is not going to leave that promise. He will continue to work in our life. See, here is a situation Jesus comes. The 15th verse onwards. It says, So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Seven people out of them, God is speaking to Peter. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he asked this three times, and he answered three times. I don't want to get into the details of what he asked and how he answered. But the first question He's saying, son of John, do you love me more than these? Imagine, they got a great catch. 153 big fishes were there. All night they worked and they didn't get anything. Jesus said, put the cast your net on the right and the net was full. It didn't break. They got 153 big fish. And now a question comes from Jesus. He's asking, hey, Peter, do you love me more than these? You went in the night, you toiled all the night for fish, you got it. You think this friends that you have with you, all that you have with you now, the fish, the people around, but do you love me more than this? He wants to know how much we give importance to God. He wants you. He wants your full attention. He wants to have what you have deep inside of you. The fishes or the wealth or the position, he's not going to be, he's not going to looking at, he's not going to look at it. But what he wants, do you love me more than all these? He said, I love you, Lord. You know, that's where he is reconnecting with God. That's where God is telling Peter, whatever you do, whatever you did, whatever you're doing now, I'm not going to be bothered by that. But what I want you to know is I'm committed. You know what then he says? 
He said three times. First he says, tend my lamb. Shepherd my sheep. Again, the third time he said, tend my sheep. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, he said, I'm going to make you the fishers of man. I'm going to make you how to catch hold of man. And in the ministry, he taught them and Peter was doing it. But now, in a situation where Peter kind of said, I'm not going to do that, or I don't know what's going to happen, the fear factor, the I'm not good enough factor, and all those things was playing in his mind. But at that time, Jesus comes and says, but my promise, now not only that you make or you fish for man, or you catch hold of man, but I am giving you the responsibility to take care of them too. I'm not just going to stop with just getting a person into the kingdom, just getting or sharing or something with a person, but I'm giving you that responsibility to lead the church. To lead the church. So when God speaks, he will not speak halfway or he will not give you the the half thing into you he will only say or he will only give the whole package to your life so when he called in the beginning he said i'm going to make you this now he, he one of the important things that we did not to notice here is he did not ask peter why did you deny me he never asked there was no blaming there was no accusation. There was no detailing of how things are. He didn't even ask. He wanted Peter. That's how he is committed to you and I. Whatever happens, maybe you are somewhere in the middle. Maybe you, you lost that fire. You don't have it anymore. But he is committed. He is faithful. What he wants is you. He only wants to know... How much do you love me? What is important things? The things that you have or you or me? That's this question. The things that you have, that's what you love or you love me? That's the question you need to answer. And when the answer is yes, it is you, Jesus, then he is saying, you know what? I'm not going to stop it halfway, but I'm going to complete it. What you need to do is you need to take care of. And he's ending that conversation with us. And he even gives a description of how he is going to end his life. Then he's saying again, Peter, you follow me. You don't even know. You don't even need to know what is going to happen. He asked, what will happen to this guy, John? And he said, that's none of your business. That is between you and me. But you know what, Peter? You follow me. If the people who said, if you go fishing, I will come with you. No, we don't need to go with somebody. You have a roadmap. You have a very clear plan. And that's where you need to go. And he is committed. But how committed are you? As I was saying in the beginning, we all are looking for that one person who is faithful. That one person in our life that we can go and share our joy, our sorrow and everything, right? Here you have a Lord. Many people leave him and go after people. Nothing wrong in having people in your life. You need to have. Like David had Jonathan. Jonathan had David. The friendship is there. We need to have friends in life. But if you neglect the presence of God and you go after people, you're going to miss it. But when you go to God, the first, as a priority in your life, you're not going to miss anything in your life. God is going to fill you up. He's going to complete the journey with you. So if, if you think that you're not good enough, you know, one of the things in the kingdom of God, and especially in the church, when you talk to believers, what they say is, you know what? I'm, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know, after some time, they're kind of completely fed up and they say, it's not going to happen. They think about the past. Even though Jesus forgives everything, they remind God about their past. And they remind themselves about in the, what happened in the past. But Jesus, from this, we need to understand that he didn't even ask why or what. He just wanted to know how you love me. He needs you. And when you commit yourself to him, he is faithful 
to complete that process in your life. Nothing can take us away from the plan of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. 2 Timothy, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny who he is. For he cannot deny who he is. Church, I want to tell you, whatever situation you are in, any kind of unfaithful, you think, you know, I was unfaithful. Everyone wants a faithful husband, a faithful spouse, a faithful child, a faithful believer, a faithful employee, a faithful employer. We all want that. But Jesus is saying, even if you are unfaithful, I will remain faithful to you. I'm not saying it is not a license to go or continue to be in that unfaithful life. I'm saying, if something happened, he is saying, I am a faithful God. For I cannot change my nature. I'm not a man to change my word. This is a promise you and I have. This is a promise that you and I need to believe and say, Lord, even if nothing happens in my life, imagine the time in John chapter 21 as they decided to go and fish and the conversation that Jesus was having with Peter. You know, the time, the night, that hours, what was going through in Peter's mind? You meditate on it and you connect it with your life. What if you don't see that presence, that active presence of God? He is always there, but you are not experiencing it. But you're complaining. I don't know what's going to happen. Do not let fear paralyze you. That is one key thing. That is the greatest weapon of the enemy, fear. What will happen? My future, my health, my kids, my, my, my retirement plan. You know, everything, everywhere, this is there. That is one of the things that we need to fight it out. How we need to fight? You need to go back to the word and say, Lord, I believe that you are faithful to me. And this one scripture, you need to speak to yourself. You know what? Even if I am unfaithful, my God is faithful. He cannot deny who he is. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that our God is a faithful God? You know, this is one thing you need to really reinforce into your mind that my God is a faithful God. It is not going to be depending upon your nature. It is not going to be upon the way you read the Bible or what you do, but he is going to remain faithful. Hallelujah. Always remember, it's the same. The God who spoke to Jacob, the God who speaks to Peter, is the God he's speaking to you. Hallelujah. The Jesus is speaking to you. Now we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have the Holy Spirit. Peter and his friends were not used to the way of living a life of being led by the Spirit. But in the day of Pentecost, when they received the Spirit, you know who jumped out of the upper room and started preaching? The same Peter said, I'm going fishing. He's the one who jumped out and I believe he went on and he said, he started preaching. The same person. What you need to do if you are not feeling that, continue be in the presence of God. Keep coming to the gatherings. Keep coming to church. Start attending or continue to attend the home groups. If you don't feel it, if nobody is calling me, I don't know what is happening. You know what? Let me go back to my try or trade. Let me go back where I was going before. Let me go back to my old way of life. You know what? Nothing seems to be happening. That's where God will come and find you. You know, when he understood, Peter understood, it is the Lord. John said, it is the Lord. Bible says immediately he threw himself in the water and he came. In that time, when you surrender yourself in the presence of God, God is going to show up. That's when you need to give everything to Him and take everything from Him. And it should happen on a daily basis in your life. 
don't wait for a sunday or a saturday meeting or don't wait for a revival meeting it should be a lifestyle with your word in the presence with the word in the presence that's when you're going to get it because god is committed to you jesus is committed to you and everyone who believes and everyone who is a believer a child of god bible says you have the holy spirit in you and you are the temple of god and that's where you are going to be led by the spirit you don't need the physical presence of god definitely he can manifest he will manifest but you have the spirit of god within you and you need to remind yourself you need to hear the spirit of god when you read the word you need to talk that my god is a faithful god and he will remain faithful hallelujah you please rise upon them Hallelujah. 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 I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back it again i have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back i have decided to follow
everything I need is in you. Everything I need. We sing Christ is enough for me. Jesus Christ is enough for me. You know, people, God is committed to you. When God gave you a word in your life, God told you that I'm going to do it and he's going to complete it. You know, in your life that you are stuck somewhere, you don't know what is going to happen. You don't know how things are going to be. And you are scared inside. You're scared of your future. You're scared of how can I do it? Or you, you are not having that faith in yourself. God is speaking to you today. He is going to make it possible. He is going to make it possible. Even in that situation, Jesus came and said, cast your net to the right. There was a miracle. Even in this time, he's going to do a miracle in your life. You don't know, but God is going to bring that miracle in your life. You know, the progression in your life, maybe that is on a hold, but God is saying he is going to restart that in your life. That a whole night of toil, not seeing the result, but ended up seeing a net full of fish. That is a sign for you today that even if you don't see anything happening, but God is going to bring into your life a great change. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, every cold situation in people's mind, Lord, let it change in the name of Jesus. I pray for progress. Progress, Lord, in jobs. Progress in marriage. Progress of their education, Lord. I pray for the changes to come in their life. We know that you are going to finish it. You're going to do it because you are faithful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We love you, Lord. And we just sang the song. We decided to follow. We are not going to turn back. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.